In terms of fat, you can see here, if you're watching on YouTube, I get 230 grams of fat. Most of that is coming from ground beef. A good portion of that is coming from bone marrow and butter and whole milk. So why do I prefer animal fats? Because I don't fear saturated fats and I want things like stearic acid and 18 carbon saturated fatty acid that I've talked about in the past having benefits for the human organism. There are studies with stearic acid where if you deprive people of stearic acid, there are changes, negative changes to the mitochondria which are reversed and you see the mitochondria turn on and do beta oxidation. They start burning fat when stearic acid is reintroduced in the diet. Where do vegans get stearic acid? You're not getting any stearic acid on a vegan diet unless you're eating cocoa butter. That's the only place on a vegan diet that I'm aware of where there's any significant amount of stearic acid. But animal fat, the fat in 80-20 ground beef, butter, which also has butyric acid, probably beneficial for the gut, and butter and animal fat also have odd chain fatty acids, something I've talked about in the past. Basically, I much prefer animal fats to any other fats in the diet. And people always ask, what about olive oil? Well, I don't eat a salad first and foremost, so I don't have any reason to put olive oil in my salad. Many olive oils are between seven and 21% linoleic acid. I don't want that much linoleic acid in my diet, even in an olive oil. Tallow and butter are two to 3% linoleic acid. It's a very small amount of that 18 carbon omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acid that I think is a real problem for humans. I will do a podcast in the near future having Tucker Goodrich and Jeff Knobs back on the podcast to go deep dive into seed oils again, if you guys are curious, but I've done multiple podcasts in the past with Tucker specifically and others talking about the problems with seed oils in the human diet if you want a deep dive there. But you can see here, if you're watching on YouTube, the lipids break down as 80 grams, 80 grams of monounsaturated fat, 96.9 grams of saturated fat. It says I have 10.5 grams of trans fats. Those are conjugated linoleic acid from uh, the animal foods. They're not from chips or anything like that. Those are different types of trans fats than you would find in processed food. And what's interesting is you can see that I have 5.5 grams of omega-6. And what's interesting is you can see I have 5.5 grams of omega-6. That's probably predominantly linoleic acid, but it could be some other omega-6s. And that's from a combination of things. Ground beef does have linoleic acid, but it's a very small amount relative to the total amount of fat in that. If you look at 5.5 grams and you multiply that by nine calories per gram, and you take that as a part of 3,791 calories per day, I'm getting 1.3% of my calories as linoleic acid. And that's, I think, where we should be evolutionarily as humans. Below 2% of the calories as linoleic acid, I think, is critical. Once you go above 3 4% of linoleic acid calories in your diet, I think that's where humans begin to have problems metabolically. And most of the population probably has 5 to 9 or 10% of their calories from linoleic acid. Most people are eating five to seven tablespoons per day of seed oils, which are very rich in linoleic acid. Depending on which seed oil you're eating, you're gonna get more or less of the linoleic acid. Things like grapeseed and soybean oil are particularly rich in linoleic acid and are going to really push that up. I don't want more linoleic acid in my diet. I don't need olive oil in my diet. I don't want more linoleic acid in my diet. I don't need olive oil in my diet. I would rather use animal fats. I don't use any fats to cook. I cook on a grill. I've got a Schwenk grill. It's a stainless steel grill with a ceramic element on top. And that's what I used to cook for my meat morning and evening. I don't have a pan. If I were gonna use a pan, it would be a stainless steel pan or a cast iron pan that I would put maybe a little bit of tallow or butter in. But most of the meat that I cook has enough fat in it that I don't even need to add oils to the pan. So I don't use extra cooking oils. And if I were, they would be animal fats, tallow, which is rendered beef fat, or butter. So those are the macro breakdown. Let's talk a little bit about the foods I eat, and then we'll get into some of the micronutrients. I prefer to eat beef because I can get it grass-fed and grass-finished. I don't like to eat chicken, but listen, chicken is way better than plant-based meat. And if you can get chicken and you like chicken, then eat chicken. My concern with chicken is that chicken is a monogastric animal, like a pig, and that if you are eating chicken fat from an animal that's eating lots of corn and soy, 
you're pushing the amount of linoleic acid up in your diet, and that can stall weight loss for some people. So if you are at a healthy weight, if you're at the body composition you want, eat chicken, eat pork, eat bacon. I'm fine with that. Obviously, get the best sources you can. They are animal foods. They're way better than the other options. But if you're not losing weight, understand that getting rid of chicken fat or pork fat in your diet, I believe, may help you long term. This is just what I do, but you can be much more broad in your scope if you want, um, depending what works for you. I also don't have fish in my diet, but fish can be great. Select low mercury fish, salmon, or smaller fish. Don't eat it a ton. Don't make fish the only part of your diet. If you eat a lot of fish, be sure to check your heavy metals. I don't eat fish because of microplastics, because of PFASs, parafluoroalkylated substances that accumulate in fish, probably more than land animals, and because of the heavy metals. But listen, fish is way better, in my opinion, than processed food. And fish is, gasp, way better than vegetables, I believe. So if you want to include fish in your diet, that's great. If you eat a ton of it, check your heavy metals. Fats. Again, I don't use olive oil. If you want to use a little bit of good quality olive oil, fine. It's better than a seed oil. But I prefer to use animal fats, especially for those of you who are trying to lose weight, trying to become leaner. I suspect I have concerns that having olive oil in your diet may forestall some of those efforts because of the excess linoleic acid. I will do a separate podcast with Jeff Nobbs and Tucker Goodrich on connections between seed oils, specifically the linoleic acid in seed oils, and the breakdown products of that linoleic acid, specifically HNE, 4-hydroxynonanol, and obesity at a later date. But consider this, there are some really interesting weight loss studies that have been done. And in those studies, we consistently see that lowering the amount of linoleic acid in people's diets results in consistent weight loss. And that, I think, is the ethos behind eliminating olive oil in people's diets. Obviously, start with the seed oils, but... I think for those of you who are really trying to lose weight and are stalled, consider even eliminating the olive oil and just focus on something like animal fats. Consider this study, the impact of eight-week linoleic acid intake in soy oil on LPPLA2 in active healthy adults. LPPLA2 is lipoprotein-associated phospholipase A2, uh, probably connected with some degree of vascular damage. An increase in plasma linoleic acid following an intake of soy oil was independently associated with LPPLA activity, LPPLA2 activity, which was also related to ApoB, oxidized LDL, and CEPICT, which is a vascular health indicator. Now, after I just got done telling you guys about olive oil, consider this trial in which they substituted olive oil relative to soy oil and they saw weight loss. So this is what I was saying. Listen, olive oil is better than seed oils, but I think you could do even better in a trial that had a third arm with tallow. That's my hypothesis, but here's a trial showing that fat loss was 80% higher on extra virgin olive oil compared to the control group, which had soybean oil. Presumably, one hypothesis for the mechanism here is that lowering the amount of linoleic acid leads to weight loss. But as you can see here, their conclusion, extra virgin olive oil consumption reduced body fat, improved blood pressure, Our results indicate that extra virgin olive oil should be included into energy-restricted programs for obesity treatment. I would love to see tallow and butter in these treatments even more than olive oil. But look, if you're stalling in your weight loss and you have olive oil, you got to change something. And I think think getting that out there might even lower your amount of linoleic acid in the diet and help if you're on a plateau. For people that are weight stable or at a good place, you can eat olive oil. It's not my favorite, and I've talked about why.